and welcome back. I'm Mama Dr. Jones, a board certified OBGYN, a mom to four, and today we're reacting to Adam Runs Everything, the truth about hymens. This video is most certainly getting demonetized, so if you're new here, hit that subscribe button to help me out, and if you're returning, give it a like, leave a comment down below or something, tell me what you learned about hymens in this video. We also have our You Don't Get to Be Offended by Science and Science is Inclusive merch, which a lot of you have been wearing and sending to me when you get your COVID vaccines, and it has made me incredibly happy. So if you think you might get your COVID vaccine soon or ever, you can check out the merch store below and get a science shirt because it's made me so happy to see you all wearing them while getting vaccinated. Hope is in sight. Stay strong and get vaccinated. What's a hymen? Uh, okay, it's a bit of girl uh, that covers the vaginal area until she has sex. Yes, a freshness seal. Do not consume if open. Sorry. Um, okay, so yeah, that is not what a hymen is. A hymen is a small piece of tissue. It can be completely covering the vaginal opening or have a small opening that's just enough to allow menstrual blood or it can just be a ring of tissue at the base and they're broken in many different ways. The function of a hymen is thought to be simply to keep bacteria from bowel movements out of the vagina when you are a baby. Past that, it really has absolutely no function. People picture the hymen like it's one of those paper banners at a sports game. They think it covers up a lady's vagina, and then when she has sex for the first time, it gets busted. Seems pretty accurate. Yep, let's go play video games. <laughs> no, you don't. Everything about that is wrong. Okay, think about it. If our hymens completely sealed our vaginas, where would our periods go? I mean, we'd blow up like the blueberry girl in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. So actually there are situations where that happens. This is called an imperforate hymen, where the hymen completely occludes the vaginal opening, even through puberty. This is very problematic because as she mentioned, how does menstrual blood get out? The way these patients present classically to the clinic is with a blue bulge and cyclic monthly pain, they will also say that they've never had a period because none of that blood is coming out. So this is something that can happen. It's extremely rare, but when it does happen, it can be fixed relatively easily with a simple surgery. Again, it's not normal and it's very unusual and rare, but it can happen. Oh yeah, and where would you pee? <laughs> you know, we don't pee out of our vaginas, right? We pee out of our urethras which is a separate hole. You're a health teacher. And our school district is very underfunded. So that's how many holes total? This is a super common problem that I see in people who never had adequate sex education, which is basically like any of us who grew up in the United States, unless our parents were just exceptionally great at teaching this. The external genitalia basically include the vulva, which is the labia majora and minora, which are the lips. And then you can kind of spread those apart and see the urethra buried just beneath the clitoris and clitoral hood and inside the labia minora, but not inside the vagina. Just below the urethra, you have the vaginal opening and the vaginal opening just inside that, maybe like this far inside that, that's where you see the hymenal tissue. It's visible in most people, even in someone who has or hadn't had sex, I can't tell by looking at it. So that's why even in a fully imperforate hymen, like we discussed earlier, there's not typically any problems with peeing because the hymen sits just inside the vaginal opening and the urethra sits just outside and just above the vaginal opening. And then obviously you have the anus where you have bowel movements from. The hymen is actually a thin, stretchy bit around the vagina. In most women, our hymens have an opening that's big enough for tampons, fingers, and yes, getting busy. But it's not like a barrier. It's more like a balloon arch. Okay, but doesn't the hymen break the first time you have sex? Like, doesn't it hurt? It doesn't have to. It might if you're not careful with it. Oh, oh fudge. I damaged the balloon arch. Oh, my God. Wow, that was quite the visual there. Uh, yeah, so it might, and sometimes there can be a little bit of bleeding if that happens, but most of the time it doesn't. And again, I just want to repeat that you can't look at a hymen and tell if someone is a virgin or not. I really hate that word. I, I don't like the idea that 
you lose your virginity, like you're not losing anything, right? This is an experience. I've heard um, Brenda from God is Great talk about it like that and say like it should be sexual debut or something like that. Then you're not losing something, you're gaining an experience. Let's reframe that. We're not using virginity anymore. We're gonna say sexual debut because I like how she says that. Hymens can be many, many, many shapes and sizes. You can have cribiform where they have tiny little holes. They can be fully circumferential or just a little like C shape on the bottom or just on the side. I mean, they come in all shapes and sizes. There's a whole variety of hymens. But it can also tear from doing the splits or just living our lives. Even then, hymens can heal, and a lot of them never even get torn in the first place. One study found that 52% of sexually active teenage women had intact hymens. Really? Yeah. H-Y-M-E-N, not well understood by men. Go hymen! Okay, I mean, that was a little unnecessary. Like the hymen is not well understood, not just by men, but by almost everybody. So I don't like that, but I know they're just trying to make a joke, but I didn't like that joke. The hymen as you understand it is a straight up myth. Okay, Emily, are you sure about that? Maybe you should call in an expert. <laughs> yeah, that's a good call. That's what I usually do, so. How's this for an expert? Good point, I feel bad. I, I mean, yeah, sure, but I also don't like this idea that just because you have a body part, you're an expert in it, right? Like, I have lungs, but I'm certainly not an expert in lungs. Yes, it's great that she knows what she's talking about and she's giving excellent information, but there are people who are experts in this and I'm one of them, Dr. Jen Gunter, Dr. Jen Lincoln, Dr. Marta Perez, Dr. Natalie Crawford, all of us are actually experts in this kind of thing. So I think it's important to acknowledge that because I'm a narcissist, but she is giving great information. In some parts of the world, women are forced to show government officials that their hymen is intact. If they don't, they can be denied jobs, barred from making rape accusations, even thrown in jail. Virginity exams are straight up sexual assault and they don't even prove anything because the hymen doesn't work that way. Yes, I made a video about this not too long ago. I will link it in the description box below. In that video, I had talked about this rapper TI who said that he takes his daughter to the GYN office once a year for a virginity test and I was appalled. And so in the comments, there was a mixture of people. Some people saying, well, just kick him out and then the GYN can pretend that they did the exam and sign off on it. And then some people saying, oh my gosh, the GYN should be in trouble for doing that, which yeah, you shouldn't do that. And then some people saying, what's the big deal, just do it. The right answer is you just don't do these. It shouldn't be offered by anyone. So if somebody shows up in my office and asks for this, the answer is I don't do that. I won't do that for you. The problem with saying, let's just kick them out and you know pretend that we did it and write the note and like have a little pact with the person who was brought to the office, usually an underage girl, is that then you put this patient in the situation of if they had been brought in by this parent because that parent is abusive, which is pretty common in these situations, or if that person who's brought in for the exam had previously said that they were raped or assaulted, if you pretend to do that exam and then write the note, you may be putting that patient in more danger by pretending that you did an exam and said that they're a virgin because that might be used against them to invalidate a claim that they've made about sexual assault. So the right answer is always, we don't do these exams. Looking at the hymen does not tell me if you have had vaginal intercourse, period. Physically speaking, virginity doesn't exist. It's just something we made up to be mean to women, like entourage. Oh. Oh. Wow, I learned something. That felt great. I feel taller. Do I look taller? Glad to help. Anyways, it's time for you to go. Emily, you know, usually I do more of a wrap up than that. Nope, yeah. hit the road. It's date night and clock's ticking. I appreciated that. That was a really good episode. There's a lot of learning and I think that really dispelled a lot of myths that there are about the hymen. Thank you to whoever suggested it. I hope that you learned something today. I will link some other OBGYN Reacts videos in the playlist over one of those sides and I will see you next Monday.